In this video, I'm going to make a plant soil moisture monitor using a Raspberry Pi Pico. I've done some Raspberry Pi stuff before using a Pi Zero in my robot KV, but I'm new to the Pi Pico, so I thought this was a great project to get to know how it works. The Pico we're going to use has already been set up with MicroPython from a previous project and is running a bit of code that flashes a red LED. And being a classic starter project, with more than enough videos and articles already. I'm going to skip that bit. Instead, I'm going to focus on the sensor side of things. And handily, the same article has a jumping off point, which I can adapt for my uses just a couple of pages later. But first, I need to find my original flashing LED code, which on the Pico is not as simple as it seems. If, like me, you are new to the Pico, it can be quite confusing how it connects and interact with the host computer on which you're adding the code. And if we connect it with the boot cell button held down, as we did when we set it up, we get some unexpected results. Like the files we thought we'd put on seem to have disappeared and we're being prompted to install MicroPython that we thought we'd done already. So clearly we're doing something wrong here. And having safely ejected RPI, RP2, RPI, Pico, I can disconnect the USB cable and do a bit of research. And this is what I found out. Instead of holding down the boot cell button, just connect the USB cable. You'll notice now the Pico has power. That Python program is now running automatically. Now we can open Thony again. That's the application we used to write the original program. And with show files selected from the view menu, we can scroll down and look, there's our program, which we can open with a double click. And better still, we can edit changing some of the parameters of our flashing LED, making it flash slower, and we can see it run live, tweaking the values as we want to. But most importantly of all, here is where we can add the extra code for reading the data from our moisture sensor. But first, with my newfound knowledge, I want to try something out. If my water sensor only flashes red when the water's run out, how do I know it's on at all? So I want to use the green onboard LED to tell me when the program is running. And I figure I can use pretty much the same code as for the red LED. So I've renamed that RLED and starting with the line of code that defines the LED. I'm copying and pasting a line directly underneath. And I can change that R to a G for my new LED definition. And change that pin value to 25 which is used for that onboard LED. In the same way, I can copy and paste what happens to the LED while the program's running. Again, changing the R to a G, and I just need the bit where the value is 1, because I want my LED on all the time. So when I run the program, I get a solid green and a flashing red LED. So now, back to the water sensor, and back to Hackspace magazine, from which I'm adapting the project. And first of all, I'm wiring up my sensor following the instructions, just counting in the number of holes to get the wires in the right place. The red to one of the three V3 pins, the black to ground, and the green for the analog signal to pin 26, which is connected to the analog digital converter, or ADC, on the Pi Pico. The connectors on my sensor are labeled differently, but it isn't rocket science to work out which is which. And wiring done, on to programming. And as before, I've got the Pico connected by the micro USB cable to my Pi 3. And I'm opening my existing program that's on the Pico using Thony. You may notice that it's called main.py. That makes sure it is the program that is running when the Pico is plugged in. Now I can start to add some parameters for our moisture sensor. These are largely based on the ones from Hackspace, but I'm going a bit longhand and including the whole machine bit just so I know what's going on. So moisture equals machine dot ADC open brackets 26 close brackets. If you remember, pin 26 was where we plugged in our green wire from the sensor's signal pin. You may also notice that the wires are actually now white as I needed some slightly longer ones, but I double checked that the connections are correct. Then, having cleared some space in my program, I can start adding the new code. Notice that I've left the instruction for my green LED where it was, and any subsequent lines of code are indented by the same amount, so the while true applies to them all. Then there's a bit that's taking me a while to get. 
That moisture reading is analog, and this line turns it into a digital reading as a 16-bit integer, somewhere between 0 and 65535. That value, at any one time, would effectively sit in the brackets at the end of the line. Now I need that integer to accurately reflect the voltage, which I can do by dividing by the 65535, giving us a value somewhere between 0 and 1, then multiplying by the system voltage, which is 3.3 volts, or 3300 millivolts. And that print instruction will display what the voltage is in the shell section of the screen, and ultimately it will be that voltage which triggers our LED. Now I think this print instruction is largely for the magazine article and helps to explain how the sensor works. But here you'll realise what a novice I am as I carry on typing, even though the grey highlighting indicates a syntax error somewhere, which I soon find and close the bracket on the line above. So we've got our program reading and interpreting the information from the sensor. When the sensor's in the water, the voltage is higher, so we want it to tell us when the sensor's out of the water and the voltage drops. And here we use an IF conditional statement. But in order for that to apply to the code above, we need to indent it by the same amount, and subsequent lines indented further, so they come under the same IF statement. Now, the article uses a little loop to buzz the buzzer five times, and we want to use the same loop to flash our LED five times. So that little bit of code for our flashing LED right from the start can be pasted in place, making sure we've got the indents all correct. So let's just review our nearly complete code. Here are the two modules, unchanged from the original program, and this is the object definition for the green LED and the one for the moisture sensor that we added. And in the while true statement, we've got the green LED on all the time, so we know it's working, and the setup for the moisture sensor, which is measuring the voltage, which when it drops, needs to alert us by flashing the red LED five times. And now I just need to add an extra line for a pause of five seconds before flashing again. In the final version, I shortened this quite a bit as it was rather slow. And when we test run our program, we see we've got a low voltage of just 16.9 millivolts registering in the shell and our red light is flashing. But when our sensor goes into the water, that voltage leaps up and the light goes out, but soon starts flashing again as soon as the sensor's out, which is exactly what we want it to do. So with our program saved as main.py, we know it will run automatically as soon as our Pico is powered up. And our red LED is flashing, exactly as it should, as soon as the sensor comes out of the water. As you've seen throughout the video, I'd intended to run my Pico using a rechargeable power bank, which has been fine for testing, but after a couple of minutes of actual use, it cuts out. Obviously intended for more power-hungry applications, like charging a phone, and designed to switch off as soon as the battery is full, and the current demand drops, which is obviously what's happening here. So for now, it's going to have to be plugged in, using a USB adapter which really isn't what I want, but that has given me an idea of where I want to take the project next, which is to make a more permanent installation in a neat package with an internal battery that can hang off the side of a plant pot. As always, this threw up a whole bunch of new challenges, and you can see how I got on in this next video.